so you're packing up your life, you're about to move to a Caribbean country, and you're like, what should I bring with me? You don't want to end up at the airport, 5 a.m., two carry-ons, four checked bags, one of which is over the weight limit. Now you're distributing stuff frantically between your checked bags and your carry-on bags so you can make that weight limit. All of a sudden, you're paying like $400 in luggage fees. You don't want to be that person because that person was me. So, with Ashley. All right, all right, necessities. That's what we're gonna talk about first. We're gonna get into what is absolutely crucial. What do you absolutely need to bring with you? I just wanna know I'm not gonna be talking about school supplies because I have a whole video on what you need for school. This is about lifestyle. Supplements, medication, allergy stuff, etc. You can get certain things here. Like, I've honestly had a hard time not finding things. Even with prescriptions, if you just show the pharmacy your prescription or you ask the nurse on campus or you ask a doctor at a clinic and you're like, hey, this is my prescription, I ran out, they will point you in the direction of what pharmacist to go to or if they can fill that for you. For the most part, I have not had a hard time with anything. Like, I've heard of people being able to refill their prescriptions for like ADD and ADHD medications or contraceptives. Like, it's really not that hard. I'm allergic to my donkey and I was able to try a bunch of different strong allergy medications so like you're gonna be okay however you know if you need something super specific like you have a super specific prescription then definitely bring that from home you know don't just come here blindly hoping for the best water filters like for your drinking water like if you have a Brita or like even a shower filter those are huge because like the water here is kind of like um, minerally I think heavy I think is the word I'm looking for. You might feel a difference in the texture of your hair. Aquabliss is a pretty good brand, but you know, go ahead and read your reviews and do your deep dive before you buy anything. You know what I'm saying? I know Brita doesn't filter out Giardia, but I'm still religiously using my Brita. And also then you're saving money on not a million jugs of water. Hygiene products, quality razors, hair products, skincare, your fave makeup, whatever. For this kind of stuff, like you may be able to find some things here, but it's going to be super pricey. Certain things that are imported here are more expensive than other things. I brought this massive bottle of hair oil here from TJ Maxx for $4.99. And I saw at like the beauty supply store here, one that was like, like a third of this size. And it was like definitely more than $5. You know, you're not gonna be washing your face with Dawn dish soap and then moisturizing with the hotel lotion, you know? like. Love yourself a little bit and pack those essentials that you know you're gonna wanna have here. For example, one time I was looking for this shampoo I use and it's it's Cantu, like I don't know, like it's a normal shampoo brand. I ended up going to like this random grocery store, not Rams, Island Food Camps, which had the shampoo and conditioner, it had a whole line of Cantu products, which completely threw me off and I wasn't expecting to see it there, but it was there. If you're here, you've ran out of your products and you're like, okay, now what? treasure hunt it's just gonna be a little bit more expensive next major thing that you need here i mean you're about to start veterinary school you better have a pair of scrubs that you're comfortable being in you not only want to be comfortable because you're going to be wearing them for extended periods of time but you also want to be comfortable in how you look in them so experiment with some scrubs before you come here order some return them la di da scrubs if you want some quality scrubs that are similar to figs i actually just saw this TikTok about this brand called mandala which is like Super similar to figs, same products, materials, everything. It's just a realistic cost, not sponsored, but if they want to. I recommend bringing like two pairs of scrubs. I feel like that's more than enough. You're not gonna have lab every single day of the week. And then if you don't plan on ever leaving island, bring one to two pairs of green scrubs because you're gonna need green color scrubs for your surgery labs in sixth and seventh semester. You could also go ahead and get some coveralls because you're gonna need those when you're like out soaping in seventh semester. But lots of people just buy them from students that are leaving. I mean, that's what I did. These scrubs and coveralls and whatever, they're just gonna be covered in animal poop anyways. So like, also, don't worry about getting boots. Because of the whole pandemic situation, a lot of students left behind their boots. And now the student group here, SAVMA, was able to set up this boot rental program. Disposable gloves that are your size, because for anatomy lab, they do not give you gloves. And also, again, if you don't plan on ever leaving the island, then I'd recommend getting some sterile, non-expired gloves for your surgery labs and live animal surgeries. You know, make sure they're your size. If you work at a clinic, maybe they can like tell you what fits you. But honestly, that's like a concern for so far away. You could just buy them from the upper semester students that are gonna be selling them anyways. As you can see, there's a trend going on here. When in doubt, you could probably buy it from the upper semester students that are leaving. A quality water bottle and a quality tumbler mug type of thing. I never knew I was gonna be a Yeti girl, but the way that it keeps my coffee warm, like, hot. Hoodies, sweats, leggings. Honestly, some of these indoor study spots are like too cold. And then of course, to like save luggage space, I wore one hoodie on the plane and then like one pair of sweatpants on the plane. If you like to hike, 
pack some hiking boots. I love my Columbia hiking boots, they're awesome. And there are so many hikes available to do in this country. If you haven't already seen my insane hiking video where I hiked the back of the volcano, like, that was crazy, it was exhausting, and I wish that I had real hiking boots for that hike because I was slipping all over the place. I recently went on the radio tower hike, which was awesome, and I'm glad that I had my quality hiking boots for it because it was literally like up the whole time. Bring sneakers you don't care about for anatomy lab because you don't want all that nasty formalin like on your favorite shoes, and now you're walking around your house with your formalin shoes, like, Ew. And then maybe, I don't know, some like gym shoes too, some regular shoes, sneakers that you wanna wear out to the streets, slides for the beach, nice sandals to go out to dinner, nice shoes, heels. I'm gonna lean back now. I feel like I've really been aggressive and like in your face, like trust me and bring these things and only these things. I still have more things to say, but I just feel like I'm kinda like, mm. I lied. My next recommendation is a dissection kit. Go on Amazon, search dissection kit, it's like $20. Ross has an online bookstore and they're gonna have all the things that they say you need for like your certain semesters. And they have this dissection kit that's like $100. And I was like, well, when I was an undergrad, they told me to get my books off of the bookstore. So I foolishly spent $100 and everybody else had their $20 dissection kits. And I was like, what is going on? Why do I have this massive thing that cost me all this money when everybody else has the same thing and their things have more tools that mine did not even have. Like I was missing some of the tools. Like I needed sharp, sharp dissection scissors and like my kit did not even come with that. Like why did I spend a hundred dollars? Don't be me. Don't be me. Also, if you don't even wanna buy a dissection kit, you don't wanna put that in your luggage, guess what? You can just post on the school Facebook, ISO, and someone will probably sell you their dissection kit. Pack some jeans, more than one pair of jeans. You know, pack your favorite pairs of jeans. You don't want these mosquitoes all over your legs. Also, like, sometimes it gets chilly, sometimes it rains. Also, the other thing beyond the topic of going out and having a good time is government buildings require you to wear pants or something that goes past your knees. And some even have signs that say no leggings, so you can't go and walk into that building and sweatpants and leggings. Now, if you're asking yourself, when am I ever going to enter a government building? Well, let's say you're gonna wanna buy a car or get a car rental or whatever. You're gonna need to get a license. You're gonna need to get car insurance. And then like, let's say you get a traffic ticket and you're like, well, what's the chances of me getting a traffic ticket? Hi. You're thinking one time? No. What about two times? I think I have a third in here. I'm gonna make a collage. I've heard of people getting traffic tickets for like the craziest things. The license plate numbers weren't dark enough or their windows in the car that they're getting from like somebody else are too tinted. It is what it is. And while we're talking about jeans, you know, let's just get into the rest of the fit. Let's talk about clothes. T-shirts, shorts, whatever. Nice going out clothes. Like, honestly, I wish I brought more nice going out clothes. I probably brought like a rotation of four shirts. If you're watching this video right now and you're on island and you've seen me out, you've probably seen this shirt. Plenty of times. It's a very cute shirt, but you've probably seen it in rotation maybe once a month. Dresses for white coat, your transition ceremony and your placement ceremony and your banquet, things like that. You know, nice events, bring some nice outfits. Extension cords and power strips. Bathing suits. I brought like three bathing suits, which I thought was more than enough. I'm from New England. Summer is like two minutes for me, but I wish I had more bathing suits in rotation. Let's not forget that you need a good night's sleep to survive. Bed set with a pillow, comforter, sheets, maybe your favorite comfy blanket. You're also probably thinking like, this is gonna take up a lot of space in my luggage, especially just like a pillow. Like even if you did the vacuum seal bag, how much is that going to save for a pillow? Right? So what I did to avoid packing those things is I brought the pillow on the plane with me because you're allowed to do that. And then I put inside the pillowcase blankets and my bed sheets, and then I didn't waste like any luggage space on that and I just had to carry it through the airport, which is like fine. Also don't forget, you know, your shower towel and your beach towel. Maybe bring a lock for your locker, backpack, lunchbox, raincoat if you want it, but like it rains for 10 minutes here and then stops. So I don't know, there's really no point for a raincoat. And then like when it does rain, the rain is also coming in on like a sideways angle. So what is your raincoat really doing for you? Nothing. A simple watch, like a Casio or something, a stethoscope. And don't be afraid to spend a lot of money on a stethoscope because this is gonna be with you your two and a half years here on island. And you're gonna go to clinics, use that stethoscope. You're gonna get an adult job. Probably use the same stethoscope unless you're like a cardiologist or something like that. Vacuum seal bags, get like four or five of them. Put all of your things in there. Vacuum seal it tight, put it in the luggage. You're gonna have so much space that you're saving. Now I'm gonna get into like the extra things, like you don't need these. First things first, I'm gonna go get it because I intentionally did not install this yet. I had two of them and I did not install this because I was saving it for this video to show you. So, you see this? Are you familiar with what this is? Door bottom seal, okay? 
My parents have these like all over the house. It's great. It's good for snowflake and sun and bug. Very good. It not only keeps the cold inside your house if you have your AC running, it keeps the heat out too because if you put your hand on the floor near that like crack of the door, you can feel that warm air coming in. I know you guys know I moved, but at my last apartment, I installed one of these in like the main front door and then I installed a second one at my bedroom door and I always left my bedroom door closed. I never had any of those things in my room. I move into this apartment. I haven't installed any of these bad boys yet. And guess what? I found a little friend in my drawer of all places. And when I say little, I mean like a massive cockroach. I'm literally just, ah, I don't even know what to show it. Ah! And then recently, like the other day, I literally watched a little like, not a centipede, but like a millipede crawl through the crevice of like my front door and just appear in my kitchen. And I was like, first of all, do you pay rent? Kick that boy out. But anyways, more of the story. I really recommend these like door adhesive like plastic ones because it's like a really tight seal. Another thing that's huge is command strips. Like command strips have been a lifesaver. This tapestry is hanging by command strips. My whole life in this apartment is being held together by command strips. I also brought down like a small battery powered fan, which is amazing because you can have it plugged into the wall or you can put some D batteries in there and have it going, blowing right on your face when the power goes out. Bring some extra charging cords for your iPhone because you know those things love to break and the one down at port sometimes can be a little cheap. Also bring down a laptop charger because who's to say that you can get a new laptop charger here? And if you can, I promise you it's gonna be very expensive. Like, look at the current state of my laptop charger. It wants to die. It's holding on for dear life. It's going to electrocute me at some point, but I keep using it. So just bring an extra laptop charger. And when I say the charging cords at port can be cheap, I mean like my friend bought a charging cord and within two days it stopped working. However, my other friend bought a charging cord and then it was perfectly fine. So I don't know, maybe my first friend was just chewing on her charging cord. Hard to say, but it's a sure thing if you just bring your own cords here. Bring a portable charger and just like buy one if you don't have one already because these are just way too convenient, you know? Like especially on like the plane or let's say you're off on a hike or something. I don't know, might as well bring one with you here. Bluetooth speaker. You're you're gonna go to the beach, you're gonna go out about whatever, or you're just hanging out in the apartment, bring a Bluetooth speaker, especially if it's like a JBL because then you guys can all like pair yours together and then that's really fun. One business casual outfit, you know, just bringing one doesn't hurt you. Nice top, some dress pants, dress shoes, blazer, because pre-COVID they had events here all the time, especially if you're like presenting research or you're going to a research presentation. A business casual outfit, like that can make a great first impression. Also, if you're trying to network with people, if you have an old iPhone, bring that because I literally I literally broke my phone within like three weeks of being here and I had to have somebody bring me down a phone. I got two. And like, let's say you wanna get like an island phone plan, you could put that SIM card in your old iPhone and then just use your like regular phone when you're home for the majority of the time. Now, you could bring food down to save money, like, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I think you could buy a lot of foods here and it's not that much of a price difference. It depends on what you need and what you want, but like I've literally seen like vegan things here and they're not that much more expensive than they are back home. Meats, pastas, like produce, stuff like that. Like I just think it's a waste of money bringing it here. I know plenty of people who do, who like bring things in bulk and leave them in their freezer, which is fine, but I really don't think you're saving as much money. School supplies, like notebooks and things like that, like that is a waste of luggage space to me because you can easily buy those things from like TDC or upper semester students. There's just a bunch of things that you really do not need to be worrying about. Bring a mattress topper and maybe vacuum seal it. One of my friends actually like her back was hurting so bad from her bed. So we went to TDC, which is like the equivalent of Marshall's Home Goods with a sprinkle of Home Depot. And I don't know, it just has everything. I literally love walking around in TDC. It's like my form of target here. Anyways, we went to TDC. She went and got a bed insert and it's great, it works, but the downside is, and this is what I'm saying, it was probably twice the cost of buying one at home. Yes, you're gonna get it here, but this is one of those things where you wanna save money, so maybe you should bring that in your luggage here. Fanny pack, beach bag, a going out bag, an aux cord, or like a cassette aux cord converter, if you know, you know, because a lot of island cars here have like those cassette players, and back in the day, my mom had in her car this like cassette insert, and then like it was an aux cord hooked up to it, and that was like, that was like as far as I think technology's ever gone. Amazing, I bought two of those at Amazon just in case like one of them broke and then one of them did end up breaking. And then those like little dongle like plug in things to plug into the aux cord. Yes, if you have an island car, you can pay to get a new radio installed that like comes with all these fancy features. Why? You could just bring this $10 cassette Radio Shack player and really wow the audience and save a lot of money. You can also like pay like, I think it's like $30 charging port Bluetooth thing and then like connect it with your radio. So that's also another option you could do. I'm gonna sound like a dad right now. And I know my dad's gonna love that I'm saying this, but bring like a little multi-tool screwdriver, 
head thing because I don't know, screws get loose. Sometimes you need to open things, sometimes you need to close things, you know? Do not need. You do not need these things, okay? Do not go and pack an air fryer. That is a waste of luggage space. Don't do it. I've seen them at TDC and they're really not that much more expensive than if you were to buy them at home. Same thing with a blender. I bought a blender, I go to TDC. They're like the same exact cost as buying a blender at home. I don't know why I didn't think I would be able to buy a blender here. Like, what? People blend. That's silly. I keep saying this over and over again, but you can find a lot of things on Ireland. Buy them. Resell them when you leave. Like, don't worry about bringing them here. Don't go and spend $400 on checked luggage like somebody I know. I'd say, like, the things that get increased in import prices is, like, toys and, like, the hygiene, skincare, hair care products. For example, when I was at TDC, I saw a Nintendo Switch, and I was like, ooh, like, I wonder how much this is gonna be. I think back home, it's, like, $349 in US. And here, when I did the conversion, the cost of a Nintendo Switch was 800 US, the cost of two Switches. And that's because of all those import taxes and fees they've gotta make up for. It's things like that that will end up being more expensive. Don't go and bring like pots, pans, utensils. Most of the time, all these apartments are furnished. And if something is missing in the apartment, like believe it or not, you can go and buy a skillet at the store. You can get a cutting board at the store. Go to like the big Rams Cash and Carry and they've got like the fancy kitchen knives and the big cutting boards. I know like a lot of like restaurants go there for things so like go there look around i promise you you do not need to waste luggage space the outlets are exactly the same so you don't need to go and bring those like international outlet converters don't waste luggage space on hangers i want to talk about shipping stuff here there are going to be times when you need things and you don't want to go and pay those crazy import fees i've never done this and i know a lot of people that do but you can ship barrels here and barrels are like they go for a flat rate i don't know you just like pay however the barrel costs, and you can fill it up as much as you want, as heavy as you want, I think, give or take. I think you can do barrels at like various ports. Like I know people do them in like Florida and Puerto Rico and New York. So I don't really know exactly how that works, but I know that a lot of people do it. And then you just fill it up and you don't have to worry about all the fees. It's nice and the only thing is like, just like take all the tags off things so they don't seem new. So that way when they open it up, they're not about to tax you for a bunch of brand new things. I don't know a lot about this, but I definitely want you to be aware of it. You can FedEx things here really fast. Keep in mind the, um, um, the tax that's going to end up happening, but you can get things here like in a matter of days through FedEx. And then I was saying this earlier with the barrel, but if you're gonna pack anything in your luggage, your carry-on, ship it in a barrel, whatever, take the tags off, make it look used because if it looks brand new, and it looks like you're importing something in here, it will be taxed. If they open up your luggage in the airport and they see a bunch of brand new things with tags, they're gonna tax you for it. I've literally heard of people getting taxed for brand new deodorants in the packaging. So just keep that in mind. At the end of the day, a lot of packing advice just comes down to what is important to you and how much space or weight you're gonna have in your bags. Especially when you can buy so many things from Uppers, you can go to TDC, you know, you have a lot of stores to choose from. I checked four bags. I paid $420. Don't be me. But you know, okay, if you do wanna be like me and you wanna bring a lot of stuff, don't worry because you can always end up being that upper semester student that sells all their stuff to the lower semester students. So like, you're not gonna be stuck with this stuff. You can always sell it. I'm currently selling my stuff right now. All right, guys, that's it. I'm done. I told you what's important. I told you what matters. You know, if you're disagreeing with everything I'm saying, take it with a grain of salt. If there's people watching this video who are already on Ireland, feel free to leave a comment and say, hey, I recommend this, or hey, Ashley is right. You know, I don't know. I hope this was helpful to you guys. You know, it's definitely information that I wish I had. I'll see you guys soon.